Today I'm going to review Doctor Who, The Evil of the Daleks. Look at the size of that thing. meet at last. I wondered if we ever would. The story is from 1967 and it's the ninth and final story of season four. The story also introduces Victoria as the new companion. It's a seven-parter but only episode two survives. So they've recently animated it and you can watch it in both colour and black and white animation. The story stars Patrick Troughton as the Doctor, Fraser Hines as Jamie, Deborah Watlin as Victoria. It's directed by Derek Martinez and written by David Whittaker, who also wrote the other Patrick Troughton Dalek story, Power of the Daleks. It's a time travel story. It starts in 1966, goes back to 1866. The last two episodes, it's on Scarrow. The story introduces the Dalek Emperor, who also appears in Bad Wolf and the Pattern of the Wears. Victoria appears in episode 2. She was on holiday for episode 3, but the film some inserts. And Patrick Troughton was also on holiday for episode 4, but he had some pre-filmed inserts for that episode. This story was intended to finish off the Daleks, so this was the last Dalek story in black and white, but they would return again for Dear the Daleks, a John Pertwee story in 1972. So that's a five year gap between Dalek stories. So Evil of the Daleks is an epic story all about the Daleks wanting emotions. So before Evil of the Daleks came out on Blu-ray, I had to make do with reading the John Pale novelisation of it. It's a great book. So after reading that, I've always wanted to watch it. I always knew it would be a great Dalek story. So here's the Blu-ray. That's a Blu-ray that's just come out. You can watch it in black and white or colour, the animation. So for this review, I watched it in colour. Usually I watch it in black and white because it's a bit more authentic, but I thought I'd treat myself and watch it in colour. So it's a really interesting story about the Daleks wanting the human factor. They've discovered that there's a reason why they're always getting defeated. And it's because of emotions, that they're lacking something. So that's what they're trying to discover, the human factor, and use it as a weapon. So it's a seven-parter, it starts in 1966, goes to 1866, and then the last two episodes are brilliant on Scarrow, the best two episodes. So recently I reviewed The Web of Fear, and that's only got one episode that's animated, but it was terrible, the animation in that story, <laughs> really bad. Yeah, the bloody animation looked better than that bugger on The Web of Fear. That looked bloody soft as shit. <laughs> Yeah, it was really bad poor on this animation. But in this, it's probably the best animation that I've seen. And I think when you watch animated Doctor Who, it's best to watch the coloured version. It seems to stand out better. Speaking of colour, the Patrick Troughton title sequence looks amazing when you watch the colour version of it. It's extremely colourful. It reminds us a lot of the John Pertwee title sequence, with it being lots of colour. But I was really impressed by watching um, the second Doctor's title sequence. So this is a big Dalek story. They intended to finish off the, the Daleks in this story. And it, it, you can tell that that's what they intended. And they get the Emperor Dalek in. You see him in episode 6. And a little bit in episode 5. And when I'm watching it, I think of the Partner of the Wears. Bad Wolf Partner of the Wears 2 parter. The Christopher Eccleston story. Because that has the, the Emperor Dalek in as well. So you are the Doctor. When I'm watching this, I keep thinking of that story. Because the Emperor Dalek's really well done and the voice is incredible. It really makes like a, a big difference having the Emperor Dalek in the story. Gives it like an epic feel. Make him begin the test. Hey, that Emperor Bloody Dalek shouting on gave us bloody earache. How does bloody hell? And it's surrounded by like Dalek commanders, like the, the black uh, top Daleks. 
it's really well done, amazing scene. Story's not without its faults though, with it being a seven parter, I do think it's an episode too long. When you compare it to Power of the Daleks, it was a six parter, that was a lot tighter the story. But with this one, from around episode three to episode five, that, that's when the story gets a little bit slow. So if they'd have um, tightened it up, got rid of an episode, th this would have been a, a, a lot better. It's still a great story, but um, seven parters do tend to be a, a bit too long, and there's a lot of padding. It's like the Pertway stories, um, there's a few seven parters in his era that would have been a lot better if there'd been six parters. For instance, Doctor and the Silurians, that, that would have been a much stronger story if it had been six parts. With it being animated, it is hard to judge acting performances. You, you can't really do it. I know episode two uh, exists, but when you're watching the animation, I, I just watched it all the way through the animation, it is hard to judge performances, but I, I think it, it, they were pretty strong, especially the character of Jamie. He seems to have a, a lot to do in this story. I, th I think this is probably his best story. Men have searched for the greatest secret of all. The transmutation of metal into gold. And I am about to discover the secret. Nothing will stop me. Nothing. He, that bloody fellow wanting to turn lead into gold. Grady bloody twat. <laughs> But the setting of Scarrow in the last two episodes, this elevates the story to greatness. It's always great to see Scarrow. And there's a massive battle at the end where the Daleks turn on the Emperor Dalek. I thought that, that, that was brilliant, that. Re really well done. I also like the final shot. The Doctor says this is the final end. And then you get a shot of the, the eye stalk of a Dalek. And it lights up and then, then the story ends so that's kind of saying no it's not i thought that was a brilliant directional touch that really well done that scene so david whitaker the writer of this story he seems to give the daleks more um like intelligence that they're a lot more cunning in these stories than they are in the terry nation stories so it's a pity he only did a couple but uh, they really do stand out. Two brilliant Dalek stories. So overall I thought this was a classic. Although I've got reservations about it being a seven-parter. It would have been better being a six-parter. Even though it, it's still brilliant. So is it better than Power of the Daleks? I, I, I was really impressed by Power of the Daleks. I don't think it's quite as good. Because it's not as tight. The storyline. Both two brilliant um, classic stories so I'd probably say Power was slightly better although the last two episodes of Evil of the Daleks are fantastic and the Daleks are at the most cunning in this story like I say the end and the last two episodes elevates this story to like a proper classic so out of 10 I, I think I've I've got the I was going to give it 9 out of 10 but I thought to hell with it, it gets 10. 10 out of 10. Another Trouton Classic. Really brilliant area. What do you think goes to do, right here? Bloody brilliant, Phil. This is proper Doctor Who. Okay, everybody, like, subscribe, and share. See so you next time. Look out for me, holiday views, because it's October. <laughs> Bye. Bye.